All right, if you'd open your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. Just want to give you some facts today. Now, I uh, very rarely do I want to bring, uh, do I want to be an echo chamber for what you hear on the news, uh, what's on the radio. Um, I don't want to, very rarely do I want to give uh, the outside world a uh, pedestal uh, in, in, in my preaching. Um, but I think that, uh, like Pastor Jackson said, wisdom comes with experience. And the more uh, I study the Word of God, the more that I live, I can see that uh, the outside world can have a place in my preaching and in preaching. It just has to be uh, not ranting, not raving, not angry, but it has to be with a biblical perspective or a biblical view um, and seeing things through um, uh, biblical perspective. Now, what's the Bible say about all this? Why is our world the way it is? If you look around America, there's, um, there's a lot of crime. There's a lot of um, lies and scandal. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of um, madness going on, and I don't want to let it get to me in such a way that uh, I fill myself up with it with, throughout the week, and then I come here and just kind of regurgitate all my frustrations with our country. Uh, I don't want to be that, but I, I also don't want to be the kind of pastor who doesn't speak about those things because uh, you hear about it all week. I think that if you can sit down and watch the news or listen to the radio and you have spiritual uh, ears on and spiritual eyes on, then you can go, I, I see around the corner that all these talking heads don't even see because you know the scripture. Now, uh, it, the title of today, I, I wanted to call it, um, these are just the facts. Um, we could also call it what's wrong with America. Uh, you could call it all kinds of different things. Uh, I don't believe I'll, I'll rant. Preaching shouldn't be ranting. I will rave, maybe, but uh, no, no ranting. Um, uh, preachers who rant just can't preach. Uh, that's all that is. Anybody can rant. Uh, soccer moms get on Facebook all the time and rant. Um, I'm not a ranter. I may be a raver, but I will not. Um, you say, what's the difference? Well, um, Abraham Lincoln said, when I hear a man preach, I want to see him like he's fighting off a swarm of angry bees. Um, I don't, Billy Sunday was very animated with the way that he was. He was, you know, punching. Um, I don't know that I'll do that. I use a lot of hand gestures and whatnot. But what's wrong with America? <laughs> what's wrong with America? Let's look in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. We'll read verses 8 and 9, and then we'll go over and look at another portion in the same chapter. Um, the Bible says uh, in Ezekiel 7, verse 8, Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways and recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, uh, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth Verse uh, 23, verse 23. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd bless our time this morning uh, Lord, I, our country is in dire, dire circumstances. Um, I know Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. The same wicked rulers that ruled then are the same wicked rulers that rule now. The names change, but wickedness stays the same. God, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would help us to be uh, salt in a flavorless world and light in a dark world. Our Lord, um, each and every single Christian here ought to get up every day and say, how can I be like Christ today? What can I do to be like Jesus today? 
What can I do to be a light today? Heavenly Father, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, it's, uh, we have a lot of modern-day conveniences today that we did not have um, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Uh, we live in an uh, a incredibly uh, convenient time. Uh, convenient food, convenient stores, convenient just about anything. Just about anything you can have it delivered now. Um, but I can say that with the modern technology and the modern conveniences that make life better, doesn't mean our country is better. Our country is not better uh, than it was uh, some those, those many years ago. I think uh, if you just look into a lot of the big cities, there's more lawlessness than there ever has been before. Um, hordes of, um, uh, of unparented, undisciplined young people running through the streets and um, assaulting people walking down the street. Uh, vandalizing anything and everything because, well, they're, they're just, they're angry. You know why their only reason why they're angry is because they've been taught that they're victims. It's the only reason. The only reason why our, our, the big cities in our country are being burned down and um, uh, that authority's not standing up against them is because the people that are in authority now were never whipped as children. And the children that are running the streets now were never whipped by the people that raised them. Uh, put in a corner, everybody got timeouts. Timeout. What a joke. Uh, the country that we're, that we're living in now is not even a country that I, I grew up in. I was on the, um, the, the fringes of still a bit of a, a wholesome... Not, listen... There's never been a time in America where everyone was pure and everyone was moral and everyone was good and everyone was saved and everybody was, you know, a God-fearing individual. Um, there was, uh, 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 during um, uh, the outlawing of alcohol, people still ran alcohol. Uh, there's something called the Kennedy Curse. Um, and and uh, uh, folks, folks um, believe that because he, the, 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 Kennedy Sr. ran alcohol and was a, a big wig that there's a curse on his family. I look, I, I'm not diving into all that. I just know that in America, America has never been perfect. Never has been. Um, however, the further we get removed away from even respect and adherence to Scripture, the more wicked a country becomes. Now, I want to uh, be clear this morning that it is not my purpose, uh, it's not even my goal to reform America. Uh, and I don't think it's, uh, uh, I don't even know that that's possible to be done uh, at, at where we are. With all things, with God, all things are possible. I, I understand that. But everybody's got to be on board with the agenda. You know, everybody's, if my people which are called by my name, everybody's got to be on board with that. So God says, yeah, I can turn your nation around. Everybody's got to be on board. Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Uh, but we are in a—we um, are no longer, I believe, a uh, in God we trust nation. Uh, we are in um, in a self we trust nation. Uh, but um, it's not my my agenda to reform America, um, and and I don't think our church can do that. But we can reform our church. We can reform our homes. We can reform ourselves. Um, the job of the Christian. What is the job of a Christian? It is to glorify God in everything he does as he wins souls and lives a godly, virtuous life as a good servant for Jesus Christ. That's, that's your goal. When Daniel was taken into captivity with um, uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, you say, who, who are those guys? That would be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, they were taken into captivity, away from their homeland, put into bondage, and put in a new world, uh, uh, um, a worldwide system. That's what uh, Babylon was, as, as they were the um, empire country. They wanted to be a world, one world government. Uh, they would take the best from each country that they could and teach them their language and teach them their ways. The thing about those Hebrew boys, though, is they said, nah, we're not, 
We'll be, we'll be respectful. We'll, we'll do our duties as you need them to be done, but we're not violating our laws that God has given us. Um, uh, the, the best thing that you and I can do is honor God in what we do and how we do it. Now, the Bible does, though, have something to say about the situation we find ourselves in today. Uh, why are we? Go ahead, take care of what you need to take care of. Um, uh, why are we in the, the, the situation that we're in? What, what has led us here to today? The land of the free and the home of the brave, it, te- it tells us, the Bible tells us why we have so much, so much crime, so much uh, scandal, so much debauchery. It says here in verse 23, make a chain. Well, what are chains for? Chains are for criminals. Chains are for those who need to be punished. Chains are those for, are for uh, those who are unruly and will not abide by the rules. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. We have a president uh, and a cabinet who are um, uh, Bible-denying, God-hating politicians. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and it's been that way, it's been that way for, for quite some time. Uh, they think that uh, if we have tighter gun laws, if we have tighter laws, more laws, more laws, more laws, then uh, uh, mankind will adhere to them. You know, look at all the laws that we've had since America became a country and see how well we're doing now. See how well we're doing now. Something has changed. Something in the fabric of America fundamentally has changed while it, why these violent crimes have snowballed, why these, um, these, these, these protests have snowballed, why the, the chaos in the courts, if you will, have snowballed, what, what has happened? What has happened? In the places that have the strict, strictest gun laws, you'll find the most shootings. Why is that? Uh, folks, I'm not, get up, I'm not here this morning to advocate for gun laws. I'm not out here advocating for free speech. That's not my, my, my agenda. Those have been set in place, and, and there are uh, uh, people who are far more educated and, and know the in and outs of those laws than I do. Uh, I, I, I love my freedoms. I, I, I take those. I don't take them for granted. I, I, I want to use them, but I want to go a little deeper. I'll let people who are versed in those areas take care of those areas while I'll back them up, but I want to go deeper than the surface. Let's go, let's go into the heart. Let's not look at the flesh and blood. Let's, let's look at the heart. The problem with America is, number one, is this. We have departed from purity. We've departed from purity. Young boys and girls don't blush anymore. Kids in elementary class know more about sexual activity than a lot of adults do. Uh, And the reason why is because those adults let them listen to music that's not fit for the Satan himself to listen to. You can take the filth that these singer, that these, these, these demonic possessed stars have these entertainers have, and let, let them infuse our society and our culture, and your culture will be what the music talks about. Music is a very powerful tool, very powerful tool, and music has helped um, uh, pervert the purity of the last several generations. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The end thereof are the ways of death. And then the same chapter, verse 34, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. America, I will not say has become the laughing stock, but we are in the stocks and people are laughing because sin is a reproach to America. America is is able to be laughed at because we are not as strong as we were. People who have, um, foreigners who have come to this country and have been here for some decades, go ask them, is this the America that you fled from your country to come here to? They'll say, no, no, no. This is not the same America. These are actually some warning signs that you are becoming the country that I ran away from. Now, folks, now just look into not only the sexuality of our music, but also in our country has been the promotion of gambling. Money, 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 money. Win a buck, win a buck, win a buck. Win money, win money, win money. I said this a couple weeks ago, and I'll say it again. The house always wins. 
The house always wins. If you're a born-again Christian and you have a $100 bill in your pocket, 100 of those dollars are God's. 100 of them are. Every blink with your eyeball, every inhale with your nostrils or your mouth into your lungs, both of those lungs are God's. That mouth is God's. Your esophagus is God's. Your, um, your tongue is God's. Your eyes are God's. Those eyelashes are God's. Every fiber of you is God's. The only reason why we consist is because of his grace. If we take what we have and throw it to the swine, why in the world would God give us more? God, give me more. God, give me more. God, give me more. If one of my sons came to me and said, Dad, I'm hungry, and I filled up his plate, and he walked over to the trash can and dumped the food into the trash can, and he walked up to me and said, Dad, can I have a second helping? The look on my face would be, Son, you've got to be dumb. Son, are you kidding me? No. I'm not giving you any more. Not giving you any more. And that's what we do with the things that we've been given from God. Our country has taken our resources. We've been taking the power that we've, he's exalted us to. We've, been ta we've taken our position in the world and we've thrown it in the garbage can along with the 63 million aborted babies. We've taken the precious blood and life of innocent babies and thrown them in the garbage, garbage can along with God shed his grace on thee. Well, God shed it on thee. God's also going to take it from us. What's wrong with America today? Our departure from purity. Our departure from purity. We've moved toward gambling. We've, we've uh, and I know we, we um, it, by the way, it wasn't a 100% reversal of Roe versus Wade. It was a giving the power back to the states. So what it was, it wasn't, it wasn't you can't do it anymore. It was, it's going to become a whole lot harder for you to do it, uh, which, which is a win, which is a win. Uh, I just don't under, I, I'm, not, I'm not, this isn't an abortion message this morning. I'm not going to get on that, not yet. Um, but uh, uh, it's just a, a, a bullet point I have under our purity. Our gambling, our murdering of babies. American physicians are murdering, uh, let me see, what was it? Um, from 1973 to 2023 has been um, one, just over 1.29 million babies uh, 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 aborted every year, every year in the womb. And by the way, we're just the first country that um, uh, really went into the womb to do it. The Aztecs were doing it out of the womb when they were months and years old and throwing them down their stairs and sacrificing them to their sun gods. We're not the first country to kill our next generation. Uh, we're just as brutal and just as barbaric as uh, the Nordic barbarians and the South American barbarians. We live in a civilized country. Yes, so civilized that we can no, now go in with fine-tuned instruments into the womb and butcher a baby. I'm going to talk about how, how uh, civilized we are. We're going to talk about um, uh, equal rights. You take that stuff and shove it where the sun don't shine for everybody who thinks that murdering babies is okay. And by the way, I've talked to... I've talked to ladies. I've talked to ladies, ladies who have had abortions and ladies who have been taken advantage of. And I'm talking horrible, horrible, horrible situations where I don't know what to tell you. I don't have any advice. I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know what to say. Besides, I'm sorry what happened to you, but don't perpetuate don't perpetuate the hurt onto an, onto, an, onto an innocent life that's got nothing to do with it. Um, for a young lady or for a woman who, who may be in a, a bad circumstance and find themselves pregnant with a baby, I, I don't mean to sit up on a pedestal or a, a religious throne somewhere, but I, this some good, this, let God have the baby. You say, what do you mean by that? There was a lady in the Bible named Hannah. She couldn't have children. So she went to the temple, prayed, 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 prayed. God gave her, eventually gave her a baby, but she made a promise. She said, God, if you give me this baby, I'll give that baby back to you. Now, some ladies in this world, many ladies in this world who have been taken advantage of did not ask for that baby. But just like he knew Jeremiah in the womb, I think God knows that little baby in the womb. God could have an incredible, let God have the chance to do something incredible and bring light to a situation 
that is horribly dark. Now, I know I'm a man. I don't have the body of a woman. Well, you know what? Maybe tomorrow, if I feel like it, I'll just identify that way. But seriously, I cannot imagine. I can't imagine that. Um, having that decision to make. But the best way to make a decision like that is to make the decision before something like that happens. And you say, well, what do you mean? I'm saying decide before you come to the crossroads. Decide to stay, to go, I'm going to just trust God in every little thing. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says, um, that will keep him or her or they or them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, um, uh, and we know all things, all, th- all things, yeah, 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 I said it. I said it, folks. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Folks, I'm, I see that we have little ears in here, so I want to be careful with some of the things that I say. Or not, I, I, I just want to be wise with the words that I use. I don't want to be a blunt or vulgar or, or um, not thinking. But um, the things that happen in our world are terrible, terrible, terrible things. And we have to ask ourselves, what is the, I hear people say it all the time, what is our world coming to? Folks, it's coming to an end. And the reason why is point number one, because, because we have left our purity. So we've looked at uh, uh, gambling coming up. It's anywhere and everywhere. Give me your money. Uh, 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 babies, over 63 million of them. But also, a lot of people don't talk about this anymore. A lot of preachers have passed by it because, you know, it's not the 1920s anymore. You know, it's not the 1930s anymore. And, um, you know, there are new things to rail on. And Billy Sunday, you know, he, he could preach about that. J. Frank Norris, he could preach about that. But, folks, it's just as vile as a sin today as it was back then. And that's that. It's the sin of alcohol. It's the manufacturing of alcohol in our country. Alcohol is still, still, I'll say it, is still the number one. It is, it, and it is a drug. It is a drug. Alcohol is still the number one drug in America, and it's one of the largest sources of sales tax revenue our country has. America is built on booze and the blood of your sons and daughters to keep the booze selling. Now, folks, I'm not running off on some tangent of conspiracy theories, but the fact of the matter is a country that builds itself off of drugs and booze and dead babies and gambling can't survive. We've lost our purity. We've lost our purity, and we've lost our purity for a number of reasons, and I'm going to pick on these guys. Number one, um, because churches won't preach the word like they used to anymore, because parents won't lead the home anymore. Um, It's the destruction of the home because mom and dad both have to work a job to pay the bills, and the child left alone bringeth his mother to shame, and they know that. They know that, but it's our politicians the absolute depravity of our politicians. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 12, if a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. If President Biden is a wicked man, his whole cabinet's wicked that do his will. Every single one of them. Well, I'm just doing my job is the weakest cop out I've ever heard in my life. I'm just doing my job. Folks, listen, respect, respect your authority, but let me tell you something. And I know several people in the police force, my cousin's one of them, and I love him, Um, but they're called law enforcement. And if they don't have a backbone, then when the laws change to go against the Constitution, they will enforce the laws. Why? Because they're just doing their job. Now, the Bible says to walk circumspectly and understanding the times. Now, if you're going to go to jail, don't go to jail for being a drug runner. Don't go to jail for driving drunk. Don't go to jail for domestic violence. If you're going to go to jail, let it be because they told you you couldn't preach the gospel and hand out gospel tracts. If the Christian is going to go to jail, let it be because you stood up for Christ. That, that's the only reason why, why, why born-again believers ought to be in jail is because we're being persecuted for doing right, not for doing wrong. But the more that you stand up for right, the world's going to tell you to be quiet. Now listen, the World Economic Forum, I don't even know his name, Schwab, Claus, Charles Claus, what is it? Carl, Carl, thank you. Um, What is it? Schwab, yeah, World Economic Forum. Um, 
what, what uh, Black Rock um, Industries, I think it is, the largest worldwide um, investments. Um, all these guys behind the scenes, these people get together, folks, and talk about one world government, one world currency, one world citizenship, one world leadership, uh, the great reset. Folks, there is a great reset coming, and it's when the king comes down and says, boop, reset. Not when Mr. Schwab wants to do it, not when Biden wants to do it, not when Obama wants to do it, not when Trump wants to do it, not when DeSantis wants to do it, but when Jesus wants to do it. When God says, son, go get your children, bring them home, it's time to get this show on the road. And Jesus Christ comes back, there's your great reset. Now I understand the great tribulation and things are going, or the tribulation and the great tribulation, there's a difference there. And there's a, 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 a lot of things that are coming down, our, down, down the road. But the fact of the matter is, I don't know about down the road. I know about today. We ask, man, how did we get here? How did we arrive at this situation? It's because we've lost our purity. We've lost our, our, our um, ability to blush. And it's because we're led by weak rulers. Um, uh, the Bible says, oh, I, I just read it in Proverbs. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, uh, when wicked men ruleth, vile men are on every side. When the wicked rule, vile men are on every side. Folks, our leaders aren't just money hungry, they're power hungry. You see, that's what the, side, that's what, that's what the leading side wants. What they want is more power. They want the ability to tell you how much money you can spend and where you can spend it. Some of you are like, wait, what? Yes. How much money you can spend and where you can... China, they have millions of cameras to capture. Every, they have a um, personal credit system who you are, how you manage your money, what your grades in school, you know, your, your, um, uh, uh, your attendance to work. You know, do you, do you give problems? A personal credit score, not like America, where you can buy a house, but over in China, like how much you are allowed to spend of your own money. And if we want to freeze everything you have, that's what we'll do. You see, they don't just want money. They don't just want the office to be able to steer the country. They want power. They want ultimate power. They're power hungry. Folks, they didn't get elected. Our officials don't get elected because of their faithful service. Sure, you see the commercials. Stoy was a veteran, and this is what I did, and I'll stand for the people. Sure, you will. Sure, you will. Heard that before, but guess what? America keeps falling for it. Why? Why did they get elected? Because of um, uh, lobbying because of who they know, because of the companies pushing for them, because of their money and their giving of political favors. Our leaders, folks, are polluted. We've lost our purity and we've been polluted. Our leaders are some of the most immoral people you would ever meet. We've had presidents doing immoral things. We've had our leaders doing immoral things. Our leaders, our leaders have been perverted and our leaders in the home have been perverted and our pulpits have been perverted. Our president... Um, our president is a traitor. Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson can say it, so I'll say it. It's the Biden crime family. And we are led by wicked men. And by the way, I don't have an agenda against Joe Biden. If it was Joe Schmo from Kokomo, who was just as perverted and just as corrupt, I'd be saying his name. You see, Joe Biden made his choices. You see, we make our own choices. We make choices, we don't, we're not free of the consequences. And the American courts will never prosecute. There are all kinds of politicians over the last 20 years, me, because that's when I've, but the last 20 years that should be behind bars and they never will be. They won't ever be. But they will have their own court date. They'll have a court date. And they'll stand before Almighty God and answer. We've got people in, in, in that lead our country who are, are living abominable lifestyles before God. And they lead our country. So why have we, how have we arrived here today where you have to watch what you say? Folks, I've pulled up to places, maybe a drive through or, or going somewhere, and I'm afraid to say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir to people. Because I'm afraid they'll be like, oh, it's sir. Or it's ma'am. <laughs> okay, uh, whatever you say, Kimo Sabi, uh, whatever you say, boss, it's, I identify as uh, the wind. I'm out of here. 
Uh, I, you know, I just, uh, but um, uh, we live in a time where it's, it's, it's crazy. How did we get here? We've lost our purity. We're led by depraved, depraved leadership. And another one is, is the Bible teaches this. Let me, all, let me teach you all something. I'm, gonna, I'm 15 minutes and we're done. We don't punish bad anymore. We don't punish wrongdoing anymore. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 8.11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of sins of men is fully set in them to do evil. Go ahead and look at Chicago and see these posses, these punks running around just busting people up. Why? Well, because my cousin didn't get in trouble for it. And the Punk DA in New York just lets people go free. Yeah. Oh, hey, we can do whatever we want. When evil is not punished, it's basically rewarded. Yeah. Now, did you know in the Bible there weren't prisons and jails? God never said throw somebody in jail. Now, there were. They said deliver them to the, to the, um, uh, the jailer and different things like that. But when crimes were committed, punishments were doled out speedily. Um, now, what we should have is warnings everywhere. Warning, warning, but our kids don't get warnings at home. They don't get warnings at school. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, one. Two, and that kid's like, I know you ain't gonna do it. You know what? I'm just gonna obey because I'm so tired of your constant whining, parent. Fine, I'll do it. You know, I've got no problem snatching my boys up. I got no problem snatching Jamie up. No, I got no problem. <laughs> Jamie's got no problem snatching me up. Uh, we got, I got no problem saying, hey, boy, and getting in his face and saying, yeah, this is what you're going to do. You're going to do it now. I got no problem doing that. And parents shouldn't have a problem doing that. But we live in a time now where kid calls CPS on you. Guess what, kid? You can go with them. Go. I'll have another one. <laughs> so as in home, laws should be clearly spelled out. Uh, punishment should be something that they don't forget. By the way, I'm not talking about beating your kids. If you do that, you don't deserve to have them. The Bible says to raise your kids, to raise them in nurture and admonition, but also with the correct punishment. You see, there are words of rebuke and there is punishment. Listen, I don't punish my kids unless I believe it is Direct rebellion. Where, where there is direct disobedience and direct rebellion, that shows there is a punishment that must be doled out. But when it's just being a, 12, a 10, a 12, 13-year-old kid and being dumb, all they need is snatched up. All they need is like, hey, boy, get it together. What's wrong with you? And just because they messed up, just because they spilled the milk, doesn't mean you got to take them in the room and whoop them. And that, that's not necessary. You turn your heart, you turn the heart of the child against the father. The heart of the child becomes hard and says, you know what, there's no pleasing you. If I'm not shining like the North Star, uh, then, then, I, you know, then I can't please you. And it's not gotta be that way. You know, it doesn't take a lot for me to please God. Why in the world would I make it harder on my child for him to please me than it is for, God, for, for me to please God? So punishment though, murder. And I don't even like saying, I'm not even going to say some of the words that I want to say because I don't even like saying them. But, but um, bullies taking an advantage of people who can't defend themselves. Punishment needs to be swift. Punishment must be a greater determinant than the rewards of the crime. They've got to look at that and go, is me doing that worse than the punishment? No, it's not. All right, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It should, be, it should be something that's practiced in our society. People that destroy things should, should restore things. Every single person that shattered windows and, and, and busted up things and burned things down throughout the last several years ought to be held responsible and put on um, uh, uh, go to jail and put on work release until those things are fixed. So if a country is going to have prisons, the prisoners should work to pay for their room, and, their room and board. I can't stand somebody murdered somebody in cold blood and they get 25 years and no parole. No, death. You say, oh, yeah, life for life. You say, oh, you, I thought you were a pro-lifer. I am, biblically speaking. 
You say, well, what's pro-life according to the Bible? If you take a life, then your life ought to be taken. And I mean in malicious, sinister, cold blood. I don't mean you ought not do it, but texting and driving and you made them. I don't mean you made a mistake. I don't mean, oh no, a rep- something that you're not, that's not in your DNA to do that to people. And you, a- there was an accident, accidental manslaughter or whatever, you know, the, all the different uh, vernacular and, and, and degrees. But you went, I'm angry, bang, bang, bang. Okay, well, guess what? Bang, bang, bang. You say, oh, yeah, God says just, that's justice. That's justice. Now, I thank God I live in the New Testament times where I can be a lying, cheating, murdering, adultering fool and God will forgive me, but it doesn't mean that I don't get to pay the sins of the flesh. It doesn't mean I don't get to pay my debt to society. Now, what we do is we take guys and we put them in prison and, oh, 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 they work. No, they don't. Put them on a chain gang. Put them on a chain gang. There's work release. There's all kinds of things. I get that. But the majority of our prisoners go to prison and they have three hots and a cot and they get to work out and play games and get a free library and go to college. Yeah, thanks. See, he's been there. He knows all about it. He's a, uh, and, and watch TV and just hang out. No, I, I'm not saying going to jail is like vacation, but you're not paying for your crime. You're not paying for your crime. And for every one we lock up, there's a dozen more that need to be there. Why? Because of our society. Our society. When we have swift punishment, wickedness is purged. God made no, God made no place in his commands for jails and prisons for the people of Israel. He prescribed punishment or restitution. Pay up one of two ways. With punishment or restitution. Now, I want to very quickly um, uh, 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 stop with this. This is my main point. This is all that I'm getting to. We as a nation have arrived where we are with the leadership we have, with the, um, the, 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 the movements that we have, uh, with the, um, uh, and by the way, if you're here last week, my, my sermon last week was uh, sweet, kind, all-inclusive, Jesus loves you, He'll save anybody. He doesn't care if you're going through an identity crisis right now or not. God's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. But how did we get to a place where we've got people who call themselves drag queens, who are, based, who are groomers, drag queens dancing in their th- underwear in front of children? How did we get there? How? How is that okay? Keep that in the closet. You want to do whatever you want to do in your home, fine. But when you come out, be normal. How did we get here? I'll tell you how. We have deserted God. We've deserted God. Psalm 19.7 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. God's word has been rejected. God's work has been persecuted. God's wisdom has been ignored. People throw the Bible. People spit on the Bible. Rock and roll guys, Marilyn Manson, do wicked, wicked, vile, disgusting things with the Bible on stage. Our government school system has gone steadily, steadily, steadily downhill, and all it's done is pick up speed. Not only are government schools in moral places, in unsafe places, but they're designed to teach children to leave God out of education, and education without salvation is destruction. Education without salvation is destruction. Is, is destruction, it's damnation. So all, America is already under judgment of God. It's already there. Uh, but uh, let me give you two verses and uh, one thought, and I still have five minutes, uh, four, four minutes. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2, he says, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, he says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So our, our country can be on um, hell on wheels on its way to the, the lake of fire, but we can still live quiet and peaceably and godly and honestly. We can still do what's right. We can do what's right. If it's right, do it. I don't care if the whole world's going the other way. If it's right, do it. And by the way, quiet doesn't mean don't voice your opinions and don't stand up for anything. It means don't go shoving it in people's faces and being like them. 
Don't render what they're rendering. Don't return what they're giving. And then 2 Chronicles 7, 14 through 15, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways. <gasps> Hold on. Yeah, if the world will turn from its wicked ways. Nope. If my people will turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. So with all the wonder and with all the worry that's going on in our country right now, I've got one word for you. Work. You say work. Yeah, work. With all the wonder, you sit there and watch the news and go, what? UFOs. Aliens. <laughs> Aliens. Wait, what? Our border. What? Chinese spy balloons. What? What is going on? Uh, uh, Brother Dan, can you get the front door? Thank you. Uh, all these things that are going on, all these things that are happening, what? And then all the things that you sit around and worry about. I sit around and watch the news. I, I don't sit around and watch the news because if I take too much of it in, <laughs> I worry. <laughs> but worry, folks, worry doesn't give you anything. It only takes. Worry doesn't give. It's just a taker. And it makes you feel nervous, feel worried. And the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So when you sit down to watch the news, or you hear the radio, or you scroll through your news feed, or read the newspaper, anybody still here read the newspaper? Yeah, oh, we got one there. Uh, 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 read the newspaper, or what, whatever your means of getting information is, and you sit there and read it, and it causes you to worry. No, you can now, when you have a, when you have more of this in here than all of that in here, you can see all of that through these, through this. And if you'll work, you say, Brother Jackson, what do I work on? Well, work on number one, yourself. Make sure you're living a godly life. Best you can. I'm not saying you never fall, but make sure you live a godly life. Secondly, make sure you're reaching your family. Work to reach your family. Work to reach your family. And then third, we sing it. Work for the night is coming. Work through the sunny noon. Work through the morning hours and stuff like that. Work, work, work. It says, you say, man, work. I, I work all week. Yeah, you work all week to pay your bills. But are you working for thy kingdom come? Are you praying for thy kingdom come? You say, work. Brother Jackson, I, what do I work on? Here, I'll make it as easy as possible. Find something that you're good at or you have knowledge in or you might be able to do. I don't care if it's just being holding the ladder for me while I climb up the ladder and change a light bulb. And you say, I want to invest myself in God's work. I want to, I want to, if I'm working, I want to invest it into something that matters. Find something that you can do and start working for the Lord in that area. If it's driving a bus or working on a bus or singing in the choir or taking care, taking care of the baptistry or um, uh, picking up trash or um, uh, I don't, putting a new roof on the building. I don't care what it is. You find out what can I do for the Lord and then start doing it. But one thing everybody can do is taking a gospel track and handing it to somebody else because you're just supposed to be a sower of the seed. If you win people to the Lord, that's a bonus. But being a sower of the seed. Hey, let me give you this. Let me give you this. Let me give you this. An invitation to my church. And inside of there, it tells you how you can know for sure you go to heaven when you die. Oh, I'd never heard that before. Work. So with all the things, how our country got to where it is, can we reverse it? I don't. Can he, Yes, he can. Can we? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know this. God's still on the throne. The prophecies are still being fulfilled. And since they are, since our country is filled with wonder and with worry, the Christians got to make sure that we're still working. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. That's all I know. We'll work till Jesus comes until he calls us home. Hey, just decide what you're going to do. Don't get caught up in all of it. I do. I'm just like you in some areas where I'm like, okay, uh, we, need an, uh, we need a plan you know, in case 
the Lord doesn't come back with rapture and we need to get, and the plan is of meet over here and go to Brother Joe's and take all his food. And, you know, and uh, <laughs> Miss Inga says, yeah, bring it on, sucker. Uh, but uh, we need a plan. What if things don't go right? And what if, I don't know, I don't know. I just know no matter what happens, we as Christians have a responsibility to tell people about Jesus Christ, be the best representatives of Christ that we can be. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? We have uh, Ashton's coming up. Uh, which one did I tell you? This one here. Go in there and get dressed. We've got a baptism coming. So, folks, it's a mad, mad world, as they say. Uh, nope, this one over here. What are we doing? Are we caught up in all of it? Are we caught up that our minds are so distracted that we're, we're not paying attention to the big picture? Are we, are we caught up with the news and with the, 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 the scandals and all those things that we forget the big picture? I'm not saying ignore it all. I'm not saying don't watch the news and sell your TV and don't watch. You know, I'm not saying that. You gotta, I believe you should stay connected and know what's going on in your world, know what's going on in your country. But saying it should help us to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want the kingdom of God to come. I want that because then there's real peace on earth. It's not going to come through. Listen, folks, if the next election, um, uh, some GOP guy gets elected, there's going to be just as much turmoil, just as much havoc. Why? Because the world is at unrest. But Christians should be at rest. Yes, working, but at rest in our hearts, knowing that God is working. And we are doing what we've been told to do by our Lord and Savior. And it's to go and tell others. Go and tell others. Now, in just a moment, what I'd like for you to do when Miss Jennifer begins to play, I'd like you to come up front and pray for your country. Pray for yourself. Say, God, I have not been the soldier I should be, but I'm going to put on the whole armor of God today and, and start trying. I don't know what it may look like or what I may accomplish, but Lord, I'm gonna, you're going to find me faithful when you come back. If, Lord, if you come back on a Sunday, I'm going to be in your church house unless I'm sick. Lord, if you come back, I'm gonna, you're going to find me in my place. Now, Heavenly Father, we need your help today. Uh, and then for the rest of the day, Lord, I'd ask that you bless this baptism. Ashton, following the Lord in believer's baptism, what a blessing that is. Um, uh, he can join his brothers and Miss Dolly and Miss Rose in baptism. Lord, what a blessing. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for one day you're going to rescue us out of this mad world. We won't be able to talk about these things anymore. We won't be able to... The old things will be passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Lord, I look forward to a, a, a place of rest. But Lord, help us to war as we should and fight as we should with spiritual weapons. Lord, we need you in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me with my, with my, while Miss Jennifer begins to play? You can come up here and ask God to help you. You know, nobody else is going to help you. Government's not coming to help you. Your parents, they can only help you so far. Your pastor can only help you so far. How did we get here? We left God. You make sure that you're one of the ones near to him. 